what, what prema is. Remember I said last week, or the week before, you take all the love in this world, multiply it by a million, and then take one drop, um, and, and, you know, take all the love in the world, multiply it by a million, and um, th that's not even a drop of the love that Krishna and Jasoda have. Um, Mm. Love for Krishna is a manifestation of the Lord's internal spiritual potency and is completely free from the contamination of his lesser external potency. The effect of love for Krishna is beyond the influence of time and the modes. Therefore, conditioned souls even practicing devotees cannot understand the behavior of perfect devotees with the material mind and intelligence. Mm. The Premi Bhaktis can't, cannot conceive of doing anything that would displease Krishna. Yes. Mm. So here's a verse from the Narada Pancharatra. When that bhava softens the heart completely, becomes endowed with a great feeling of possessiveness in relation to the Lord and becomes very much condensed and intensified, it's called prema. So, at the definition of prema, you're in the stage of bhava and in that stage, your relationship with Krishna is starting to be revealed and your heart is softened and because it's softened, you're experiencing all these emotions. That's why. Because if your heart is heart, you don't experience emotions. Right? Even materially speaking. Someone who's not emotional, you just say they're hard-hearted, kind of. Right? So, your heart softens further, and then what develops within you is possessiveness. And possessiveness is defined as the feeling that Krishna is mine. Not that I am Krishna's, but Krishna is mine. And that's a symptom of love, where a devotee thinks possessively, Krishna is mine, I have him, he's mine. And a lower stage is I am his. And it would, you would think, I am his, seems to be higher, more surrendered. But if you think about it, it's this emotion of prema that possesses Krishna. He's mine. He's my property. Question, what does it mean, relationship becomes revealed? Does it mean we know who we are, or do we know what we are? It's hmm. different. Both. But one comes first. What you are comes first, yeah. who you are comes later. I have some good news for you tonight, you're not the body. And um, you already are somebody, eternally in Krishna Leela. But it has nothing to do with this. Is that good news? You like that? And that's like, it's like, it's like your position is waiting for you. Nobody's going to take that position, that's you. It's waiting for you to fulfill. That's amazing, huh? And as we're chanting, it's getting us closer to that. And it has nothing to do with who we are now. Mm.
Once the devotees achieve love, they relish ongoing symptoms of ecstatic devotion along with their newfound sentiments of prema. So in other words, when you're in bhava, you have ecstasies. When you go to prema, the ecstasies get deeper and then there's more ecstasies. So it's not like, oh, bhava was a stage where you have ecstasy, then you go to prema and it's different. No, the ecstasies just go deeper and you have more of them. Mm. Mm. In other words, like you could say, well, the example is you're, you're cooking sugar cane and then it becomes molasses and it becomes sugar. So once you have sugar, you don't have molasses. So once you get into prema, you don't have baba. But you do. It's not like that. Although that example is there, but you have, you have emotion, but the emotions are now in prema, just deeper. Hmm. Hmm. So you have different stages of love. Does anybody know the stages? Sneha, who knows what Sneha is? Sneha is the first stage. Sneha is affection. Then you have man. Man means anger. Like, you get angry at Krishna, but he likes it. There's a, some Bollywood movie which is a take off of Krishna Leela. So many of them. And the guy does something to get the girl angry and she's screaming at him. He does something like he pushes her in the water and she falls in with all her clothes. And she gets out and screams at him and then he says, you look so beautiful when you're angry. So he liked it. She got angry. Gave him pleasure. So it gives Krishna pleasure. Sometimes in Radharani he's angry because it leads into more intimate relationships. So that's called mana and then pranaya. Who knows what pranaya is? Anyone? Pranaya is love. And then you have a, a raga, which is attachment. Then anuraga, attachment, following attachment. Bhava, and then mahabhava. So this bhava, you have the stage of bhava, but when you come to prema, there's another bhava, which is like here, I think it was like the fifth stage. And after bhava, you have mahabhava. And Mahabhava is what Mahaprabhu is exhibiting. And not everyone exhibits Mahabhava. So there's Bhav as a stage, and then there's Bhav within Prema. Sneha, Mana, Pranaya, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Mahabhav. Just so you know, in the future, you'll go through all these stages. Hopefully, or most of them. Mm. Mm. The primary characteristic of love of God is its deepened state of ecstatic emotion. The secondary characteristic which caused the primary one are softening of the heart and extreme possessive attachment. So there's three things that are described here that distinguish it from bhava. The emotions got, became more intense the feelings of possessiveness. And what was the other one? Mm. Softening of the heart. There's more of a... Yeah.
How do you describe softening of the heart? It's just like when you see Krishna, it's you just can't really deal with it. It's just your heart just falls apart because there's so much love. It's a kind of an attraction. It's like in when they say the heart melts, it's like this intense attraction. That's kind of uncontrollable attraction. The transformation of the sense of belonging to one of intense ownership is not sudden or artificial. It takes place progressively as attachment matures into love. In ecstatic devotion, devotees realize their eternal relationship with Krishna in principle, but not in practice. Because at the stage of attachment, love is not yet mature. Such attachment does not qualify devotees to enter Krishna's pastimes. So we discussed before, um, like you know, you're in, <coughs> you have an inclination for the relationship. But here, it's saying it's not completely revealed. It's, love is not mature. And so attachment does not qualify to enter into Krishna's pastimes. Attachment here means bhava. By chanting the holy names, bhava bhaktas cultivate transcendental ecstasies that combine with attachment to transform into the mellows of love. As premi bhaktis, such devotees enter an active relation with Krishna as his friend. So it's like you may know the relationship, but in prema you enter it. So that means, as it was said once, you may know the relationship, you, or you might even see the pastime, but in prema you enter the pastime. You see it, now you're, instead of seeing it, you're in it. Sound good? You ready? Hmm. Such devotees finally enter an active relation with Krishna as friend, parent, lover, in which they think Krishna is my friend, Krishna is my son, Krishna is my beloved. This is the development of intense, possessive love, accompanied by a variety of ecstasies and the unprecedented happiness of directly serving Krishna. These feelings cause the condensed and intensified ecstatic emotions characteristic of love of God. The heart, already softened by ecstatic devotion, melts with intense feelings of possessiveness. This extreme tender-heartedness has two states, permanent composure or serenity and temporary symptoms of agitation caused by overwhelming spikes of ecstasy. Permanent tenderness of heart and loving service makes devotees naturally composed. It is in this state that premi bhaktis generally serve Krishna. Such composure makes devotees steady, empowered, and compassionate. Soft-heartedness is a living entity's original feature. Radharani feels compassion. Once some children near Radhakund were tormenting a jackal, Radharani heard the jackal's cries. She interceded and gave it shelter, but she also gave it a position as one of her associates. Such is the softness of her heart. So, what's being said is that when Someone has, well, someone was asking this question. Oh, yeah, some, this morning we were having a discussion about Babaji's. You know, Babaji's don't preach. So because Babaji's don't preach, you could say, or it could seem like they don't have compassion, but you can't say they don't have compassion because anyone who has love for Krishna has compassion. That's the nature of love of Krishna. So that's what's being described here. 
It's not like some devotees love Krishna and have compassion. Some devotees who love Krishna don't have compassion. They, it happens together. You'll never get love of Krishna without compassion. You understand? If you actually have prema for Krishna, you have daya for everybody. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. The energy, the energy of love for Krishna, that, that shakti, when that shakti is directed to Krishna, you call it love. That shakti, that mood is directed to everyone else, you call it compassion. It's like the same shakti, just going in a different way. This way, my love is called love of Krishna. This way, my love is called daya, mercy. So when you have this, you automatically have that. It's just like, you look this way, you call it love. You look down, see everyone else, you call it compassion. It's the same thing. It's the same love for Krishna. When it's directed towards everyone else, you just call it compassion. So when you have this, you have this automatically. And if you don't have this, you don't have this. Just how it works. Yes? Yeah. You, well, yeah, you could say you can get love here, you'll get here, but if you have here, you'll have here automatically. Yes? If you're, if you're um, a Mahabhagwa and you're staying in that mood, then you don't preach because generally you don't see the need. But I think the, it would be a mistake to think, in a sense, they're not preaching or they're not concerned about conditioned souls. manifest. It'll manifest differently. Like, maybe you have someone intensely worshipping deities, then you could say the same thing. Well, don't they care about anybody in the world? They're just worshipping deities. But how could you judge them on that, that they don't care? It may be they don't care, but they may be a pure Vaishnava who's worshipping the deity and praying that the deity purify the whole world. You know somebody here? Yeah. 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 I've also heard that we should be like preaching twenty four hours a day and every once in a while we should say something. <laughs> <laughs> we should be preaching twenty four hours a day and every once in a while say something. Which okay. means what? Praying for everyone? Yeah. Constantly your praying? Example is a great oh yeah, your examples preaching. Yeah. I like that. Who said that? a good one. Make a t-shirt. <laughs> 